Hello and welcome to my beginner's tanking guide for the Protection Paladin in World of Warcraft Battle for Azeroth. If you're coming to this video from one of the other videos in the series, you can check the timestamps below to skip the introduction and get right to the new content. In this video series, we're going to be covering a variety of topics designed to help brand new Paladin tanks or those of you who have been tanking for a little while, but maybe still feel like there's something that you're missing. All sorts of goodies are going to be in the description box below. You'll find timestamps, links to all the other videos in this series, a link to the playlist that contains these videos, as well as any other supplemental information that I think is going to help you as you learn how to tank on the Protection Paladin. The pinned comment on this video is going to contain any updates or corrections that I have to the guide so that it can stay current for as long as possible. All right, before we get into the meat and potatoes of all this, I do have a quick disclaimer. I'm going to be clicking on my abilities as I go throughout this video in order to help you more easily follow along with what I'm doing. I don't click my abilities manually when I play and I don't recommend this as a habit that you get used to. You should be hotkeying all your abilities and using your hotkeys to play. So me clicking on the abilities here in the video is just for demonstrative purposes only. Okay, so we've gone through our spell book and we have looked at all of our spells. We know how they all function and work together. Now it's time to take a look at our core rotation for the Protection Paladin and how we use that rotation to tank effectively. Now when I talk about the core rotation, I'm talking about the key abilities that we have that we're going to use over and over again every single fight and multiple times throughout the fight. So these are going to be short cooldown abilities that aren't utility based, but instead serve the function of being the buttons we mash as we go about our tanking business. All right, it's finally time to switch our view of the Paladin here and get into talking about our core rotation. So the first thing we're going to do is do a quick recap on the abilities in our core rotation. So first off we have our Avengers shield. This is our Captain America shield throw. It's going to hit a target. It's going to bounce off and hit more targets. That's going to help us establish some threat and deal damage to multiple targets. We have our hammer of the righteous. This is our filler ability that we're going to use when we don't have a more important ability to use. We have our consecration which is our big AoE that we can stand in for bonuses and that's going to deal damage to enemies around us. We have Shield of the Righteous which does a conal AoE in front of us and gives us some armor so it works as a defensive buff for us as well. And then we have Judgment which does a nice chunk of damage and reduces the cooldown on our Shield of the Righteous as well. So what we're going to do is take a look at these in some different scenarios and see how they interact together and maybe what the best use cases are. We're going to start by talking about the pull, right? The pull is the first thing you're going to do as a tank. And the pull is just attacking a group of enemies and establishing your threat, your aggro on that group of enemies so that they don't wander off and attack the other members of your party. Now, as a paladin, you really have three, maybe four ways that you can do a pull. There's one of them that you're going to want to use pretty much all the time, and the others you're probably not going to want to use, but I like to cover them just in case for some reason they make sense in a particular situation. So the primary way that you're going to pull a group of enemies is you're going to choose your main target, and you're going to cast Avenger's Shield. So we're just going to boop. That's going to hit your main target. That's going to hit three additional targets. So you're going to hit four targets total with that one single cast. Most groups of enemies in a dungeon are going to be three to five enemies. So you're going to hit almost everyone in the group by doing that. So that's one way that you can pull. The next way you can pull is to pick a target and cast your judgment. That's going to hit one target. It's not going to spread to all your other targets. And I really don't recommend using Judgment like this because it's better used to reduce the cooldown on your Shield of the Righteous charges instead. But if you really need to, you can do it this way. Another way you can do the pull is just walk into the group of enemies uh, if you want to as well. There may be a scenario where... That is kind of an ideal situation if you don't really want to move the group of enemies. But usually, as you're moving in, you're going to be casting an Avenger's Shield at them anyway. So it's kind of the same thing as using the Avenger's Shield. You might just pick a target and then walk in. And when you get really close, boop, hit the Avenger's Shield. 
So it's more of a close range thing, but generally you'll be doing the more long range of Ender Shield. And then you can always use your little Divine Steed to charge into a group of enemies and gather them up, pull them into another group of enemies, that kind of stuff as well. Uh, that does work sometimes, but generally speaking, the main way you're going to do your pull is to cast Avenger Shield. Okay, so we've done our pull. What's next? So we're going to go ahead. We're going to throw our Avenger Shield. As we're doing that, we're walking towards the enemies. They're charging over to us. The first thing we want to do is cast our Consecration. This is going to put that nice AoE down. And this is going to start dealing damage to those enemies, establishing more threat, more aggro on them for us. And it's also going to give us our nice perks. So we have one perk, which is from our passive mastery, which is going to decrease damage dealt to us while we are in our consecration. And then we also have the added bonus of our hammer of the righteous going from a single target ability to a multi-target when we're in consecration. So let's take a look at that real quick. So if we hit this target with hammer of the righteous, you can see that's all it did. It hit that main target. If we go ahead and we cast consecration, and then we cast Hammer of the Righteous. You're going to see that hits the targets on the side as well. So we're going to Avenger Shield on our main target. As we're coming in, we're going to cast Consecration. The next thing that we want to do is we want to cast our Shield of the Righteous. This is going to deal a conal attack to all the enemies in front of us. And we're going to get this Shield of the Righteous buff, which is going to increase our armor. Now, the reason that we did things in this particular order is because by doing that initial Avenger Shield, that's going to increase the effects of our Shield of the Righteous by 20%. So we're going to get more damage and we're going to get more armor from the next Shield of the Righteous that we use. We're also going to throw down that Consecration, which gives us even more defense. So by starting out with Avenger Shield... And going into Consecration, we gain our 6.5% damage reduction. Then we cast our Shield of the Righteous. And now I have 6,276 armor as opposed to the 5,230 that I would normally get from Shield of the Righteous. Now, from there, the next ability we want to cast is going to be Judgment. So we're going to Avenger Shield, Consecration... And a shield of the righteous cast a judgment and the reason we do that is judgment has a longer cooldown than most of our other abilities it does a big chunk of damage so it is a nice source of dps from us but it's also going to reduce the charge time of our shield of the righteous charges so the reason we want to do this is because we're going to have to use these charges fairly quickly to maintain the shield of the righteous buff and because of that we're going to need those charges to come back faster so we want to cast judgment as much as possible to reduce the cooldown on that so if we go here we've got avenger shield Defenses from Consecration, Shield of the Righteous with the bonus, Judgment to reduce the cooldown on our Shield of the Righteous charge. Then, if we need to fill space, we're going to use our Hammer of the Righteous, which is now going to be an AoE ability because we're standing in Consecration. So that's how the general flow is going to go. And in the introductory video, I talked about the resources available to the Paladin and how the main resource is managing your cooldowns and knowing when to cast an ability and what the priority is. Because what you're going to find is you're going to run into needing to do several things at the same time and having to choose which one is the most important. So what will happen is you'll go up and you'll cast Avenger Shield, you'll do Consecration, you'll do Shield of the Righteous, you'll do Judgment, and then all of a sudden, Consecration's off cooldown. Well, do you cast it or do you not cast it? Okay, my Shield of the Righteous buff is down. Do I need to cast it to get it back up or am I okay with leaving it? My Judgment is down. Do I have three charges? Am I going to waste the cooldown reduction if I cast this? Nothing's going on. Should I cast Hammer of the Righteous? Or, oh, I got an extra proc of Avenger's Shield. Should I throw that right away? All this stuff really comes into play, and managing that and knowing how to prioritize is the most important thing to do on a Paladin, and that really is managing your resources, so to speak.
Okay, so let's get a look at what a typical pool is going to look like, and I'm going to walk you through without kind of stopping to explain every step along the way, and I'm just going to talk about the flow as I do it. So I'm going to Avenger's Shield to get in here. I'm going to Consecration, Shield of the Righteous, Judgment. Now my Shield of the Righteous is almost up, so I could cast Shield of the Righteous to get that buff back if I wanted to. My Judgment is up, so I want to cast that to reduce the cooldown on my Shield of the Righteous charge. Consecration is gone. I need to put that back up. I've got an Avenger Shield, so I can throw that off before I hit my next Shield of Righteous. Then I've got a Judgment. Okay, there's nothing for me to do here, so I'm going to fill time. I got a proc of Avenger Shield, so I'm going to cast that. No Consecration. I need to get that back up. We go into Shield of Righteous. We go into Judgment to reduce cooldown. We're filling here. We got a proc of Avenger Shield. That's a good time to cast Shield of the Righteous into Judgment into our hammer of the righteous into consecration because that's gone i know that was a lot to take in but hopefully you can kind of go back slow it down rewatch it a few times and kind of get uh what the priority was there as far as just a list of what your priorities should be you always 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 want to be standing in consecration if you're not in a consecration you're losing out on your AoE from Hammer of the Righteous, which admittedly is not all that important, but you're mainly missing out on that 6.5% damage reduction. And that's huge because that damage reduction that we're getting from that is all damage, physical damage, magical damage, damage over time. That is huge. Our Shield of the Righteous buff is very important, but it gives us armor which reduces the physical damage that we take and doesn't do anything against magical damage so if you have to choose between getting that consecration buff or getting the shield of the righteous choose your consecration first next if you have avenger shield up it's always good to throw out avenger shield so that the next time you hit shield of the righteous you get a better effect for it but you need to make sure that you weave these if possible you don't want to double cast avenger shield and then double cast shield of the righteous you want to avenger shield shield of the righteous avenger shield shield of the righteous if you can if you don't get a proc for Avenger's Shield to allow you to cast it before the cooldown is up, you might not always be able to cast it in between every single Shield of the Righteous, and that's okay. But ideally, if you can, you want to weave those two together. Shield of the Righteous, you want to maintain that buff as much as possible, and you always want to have a charge on cooldown. Because that way, when you're casting Judgment, you're getting the cooldown reduction. If you have three stacks of Shield of the Righteous and you're casting Judgment, the bonus effect of reducing the cooldown on Shield of the Righteous is totally lost. right? And that's using resources, that's using an element of your ability when it's just going to be totally wasted. And that's no good. Definitely your last priority in almost every situation is to cast Hammer of the Righteous. This is just a filler when you have nothing else to do. And sometimes you're going to look at your bar and it's going to seem like you have stuff to do, but you don't. And I'll give you a quick example of that. So we're going to go in, Consecration, Shield of the Righteous, Judgment. Right here, we have nothing to do in that moment right there. And the reason is, Judgment was on cooldown. We had the buff from Shield of the Righteous, so we didn't need to cast it again. Consecration... We still had one down, and we can only have one. So you don't want to cast Consecration every time it comes off cooldown. You want to cast it right before you're going to lose your current Consecration. Avenger's Shield was on cooldown, so we couldn't use that either. So that was a scenario where there were some buttons that might have looked like they were off cooldown, but we didn't need to use them. So we wanted to fill with Hammer of the Righteous and make sure that we're using our cooldowns at the right moment and not just mashing these buttons every time they light back up. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is what to do if we're wanting to play more offensively or more defensively. And the first thing that we're going to talk about is playing more offensively. And when I say more offensively, I, f I mean more aggressively. You have a good group. You're able to uh, easily get through a single group of enemies. Maybe you either want to 
pull more enemies and play a little bit more aggressively in that manner or maybe you are in kind of a tough situation and you as the tank need to do everything you can to push as much damage as possible to kill a boss or to kill a particular enemy so that your group can survive or progress to the next part of the dungeon. So that's what I mean when I talk about playing more offensively. So how do you do that on a protection paladin? Well, there's a couple of things that you can do. In either one of these scenarios, playing more offensively or more defensively, you sacrifice something in order to do that, right? Playing balanced is playing right down the middle of the line. So if you want to play more offensively, you sacrifice a little bit of your defense in order to do so. Now with the Paladin, the nice thing is our main resource is our cooldowns, so we can kind of be a little spammy about what we do uh, with our cooldowns, but here's an example of a way you could play a little bit more offensively, and this is super simple. So you're going to go in and avenge your shield, you're going to put down your consecration, skip the shield of the righteous, go straight into judgment, and then start spamming your hammer of the righteous. Right? And then you're going to go back into Avenger's Shield. Cast your Consecration whenever your old one's going to come up. Cast your Judgment wherever possible. And just keep slamming your Hammer of the Righteous whenever you can. Now, the reason for that, overcasting your Shield of the Righteous, is because of our Grand Crusader ability. When you avoid a melee attack or use Hammer of the Righteous, you have a 15% chance to reset the remaining cooldown on Avenger's Shield. So really what we're doing here is our Judgment does a nice chunk of damage by itself. So we want to cast Judgment. We want to cast Avenger's Shield because that's going to hit a target fairly hard and bounce and hit other targets fairly hard as well. And then our Consecration, we obviously want to keep all the buffs from that and the AoE from that is great. It also makes our Hammer of the Righteous a AoE ability. And then we want to cast Hammer of the Righteous because the more times we cast Hammer of the Righteous, the higher the chances are that we're going to reset our Avenger Shield cooldown and get to cast that for free. So let's take a look at that again following that kind of flow and just see you know, if we get any of these procs by casting our Hammer of the Righteous. So we're gonna go there. If you have space, might as well throw a Shield of the Righteous in there. Judgment, Hammer of the Righteous. So it doesn't look like we're gonna get any procs right now. Consecration, Avenger Shield, Judgment, Hammer of the Righteous, you can throw that Shield of the Righteous in there. So Shield of the Righteous essentially becomes your filler at this point. Now the other thing to keep in mind here is you are going to be getting procs from dodging attacks as well while you're doing this. In my case, these dummies aren't hitting me, so my chances to reset the cooldown on Avenger's Shield are much lower than they would be if I were facing an actual group of enemies. So that's one of the ways you could play more offensively. The other thing that you can do is you can activate your Avenging Wrath, right? So this is going to call upon the light. It's going to increase our damage, healing, and critical strike chance by 20% for 20 seconds. So you can, you know, go ahead and pop that and then just follow that same sort of rotation. Get that Consecration down, Judgment. We're going to go straight into our Hammers here. Fill with Shield of the Righteous if we need to. There we go. We got a proc for our Avenger's Shield. So that's going to boost our damage. And then also, there we go. We got another one. If we need to heal up, we have this Light of the Protector that's guaranteed to critically hit because we cast Avenging Wrath. Those are the primary ways that you can play a little bit more aggressively as a Paladin. There are some other ways you can do so once you get into the talents, but that's not what we're talking about in this video. Next, we want to talk about playing defensively. If you have to switch over to playing a little bit more defensively, then you're going to change the priorities of your spells up a little bit again. So once you're in there fighting the enemies, always, always, always have Consecration up. Always use your Shield of the Righteous when you're going to run out of that buff and always cast Judgment to reduce the cooldown on your charges. So this is pretty much the cycle. Maintain Consecration, cast Shield of the Righteous, cast Judgment to get that cooldown, wait for the Shield of the Righteous buff to go away, cast that again, and this is pretty much the priority. So at this point, you pay a little less attention to uh, your Hammer of the Righteous than you would before. You pay a little bit less attention to Avenger Shield, but you still want to try to hit it if you can because it's going to boost the effectiveness of your Shield of the Righteous. So 
mainly you're just trying to keep consecration up at all costs, keep shield of the righteous up at all costs, keep judgment going to reduce those charges so you can keep this up, and then if you can, throw in an Avenger's Shield in between to get the boost on that. But you also have two cooldowns that are pretty good to use when you have to play defensively as well. We have Ardent Defenders, so this is a 2 minute cooldown with a 20% damage reduction for 8 seconds. This is also going to prevent you from dying if you were to take a hit that would kill you. This is kind of an oh crap button, so let's say you wanted to play a little bit more defensively, but you weren't close to dying, I would hold off on using Ardent Defender uh, if possible until you were at lower health. And instead I would use Guardian of Ancient Kings. This has a longer cooldown, but it's a flat 50% damage reduction for 8 seconds. And in that scenario, if you're at a higher health, you might as well hit Guardian of Ancient Kings, get some good use out of that cooldown. Then if that doesn't help you stay in the upper range of your health, you always have Ardent Defender to fall back onto if things get really hairy. So there's not a lot to change up when you're playing defensively because honestly as a tank, that is what you're designed to do is play a little defensively, take a lot of damage without dying. But it's just a very slight tweak in your priorities if you need to do that. And lastly, just a couple of quick tips. So if you are wanting to pull one group into another group, one thing you can do is once you have your consecration established here on these targets is you can turn and you can cast out your Avenger's shield on a different target. That's going to pull another group into your consecration. And as soon as they get there, if you're ready to hit a shield of the righteous, or if you're ready to hit your Hammer of the Righteous, that's going to help you build some threat, give you a chance to do that Avenger's Shield again. So that's a decent way on a Paladin to pull two groups. Another thing is what I mentioned earlier, where you can Divine Steed and run through a couple groups, kind of bring them into the middle and immediately drop your Consecration, and that's going to help you to establish threat on them as well. <clears throat> on the defensive side of things, if you are going to play defensively, a couple of tips here. Use the crap out of your CC abilities. So you've got your Rebuke here to interrupt. You've got your Avenger Shield, which you can use as an interrupt. Uh, and you may want to prioritize using that as an interrupt over getting the buff for your Shield of the Righteous, depending on the type of enemy you're facing. So remember, Shield of the Righteous gives you armor, which is garbage against caster mobs. So if you are playing against a caster, and that's the target that you're worried about, casting Shield of the Righteous doesn't really help you, right? So what helps you instead is interrupting their ability with Avenger's Shield. So you can change that and make that a priority to use that, to use your Rebuke, and then you do have Hammer of Justice, which is just a six second stun. So if you need to play defensively and you're worried about taking damage, then focus on surviving and preventing the enemy from doing whatever it is that they want to do as well. So those are a couple of tips to use. Uh, also here, I covered this in the spells and abilities video, but I want to touch on it here as well. If you use Divine Shield, your target will automatically attack the next target on the threat table. So what that means is you're the tank, you're at the top of the threat, the enemy is paying attention to you. If you cast Divine Shield to prevent yourself from dying or to prevent some damage, that target will immediately go, who's number two in terms of the amount of threat that they have, and it'll start attacking that target. So Divine Shield, you really want to pay attention to how you use this ability. This is not like, hey, I'm playing defensively, let me just nullify all damage for eight seconds, because someone in your party is going to pay for that. Uh, if you're not paying attention and you don't use it at the right time. That's going to cover the core rotation and general flow for the Protection Paladin. Any other spells and abilities that are on the bar that you have questions about, I've covered in detail in the previous video in this series of guides, and you can check them out there. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the Protection Paladin talents, and we're going to create a passive talent build designed to help you tank without adding more complexity to your bar. So you can take everything that you've learned in this video and just go apply that in a dungeon without having to worry about a bunch of extra buttons that you need to push because of talents. 
Additionally, we're going to look at how any of those passive talents might affect the rotation. Then we're going to take a look at the rest of the talents that we didn't put into our build and talk about when and where they might be effective as well. Thanks for watching. I encourage you to do all the YouTube stuff. Like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell if you enjoyed this video or this series of guides. Also, if you're interested, you can support the channel on Patreon at patreon.com slash setsuko, where you'll gain access to our Discord channel, behind-the-scenes footage, the opportunity to get involved with the direction of the channel, and more. You can also check out my website, setsuko.com, for even more content about all sorts of geeky, nerdy topics. I hope you're having fun in whatever it is that you're doing, and as always, I'll see you on the next video.